Welcome to our review on climate change. The first thing we need to know then is which gases are responsible for the greenhouse effect. And these are known as the greenhouse gases. And there are three we need to remember, carbon dioxide, methane and water vapour. The greenhouse gases are responsible for what's called the greenhouse effect. Now, what happens is our sun is going to transfer radiation through space and it will reach the Earth's surface. At that point, the radiation warms up the Earth's surface and it will then emit infrared radiation because all warm objects emit infrared radiation. Some of that infrared radiation is going to go straight back into space and therefore be lost but some is absorbed by the greenhouse gas molecules that are present within our atmosphere. Those greenhouse gas molecules then emit infrared radiation in all directions, leading to the warming of the Earth's surface and the atmosphere. Now, this is really important because the fact that we do have these greenhouse gases in our atmosphere mean that we can trap enough heat to allow living things to exist. So we do need some greenhouse gases in our atmosphere to allow life on Earth. The problem comes through what's known as the enhanced greenhouse effect. Now, when we're referring to the enhanced greenhouse effect, we're talking about the anthropogenic or human activities, which are increasing the amount of greenhouse gases in our atmosphere. And as a result of the enhanced concentrations of our greenhouse gases in the atmosphere, this is leading to an increase in the mean surface temperature of the Earth. Some of the main reasons for this are the combustion of our fossil fuels, which lead to the increase in carbon dioxide levels, and also things like paddy fields and increased numbers of cattle, which we're grazing for obviously beef production, the landfills and natural gas use, which all increase the level of methane. We don't generally talk about the level of water vapour in the atmosphere because that's something we can't actually control. Water will evaporate when we have warmth on the planet. So we are focused more on carbon dioxide and methane because they're the ones we have a greater control over. And the reason that we're actually worried about this enhanced greenhouse effect that we as humans are causing are because of some of the impacts it can have on our planet. So we're seeing increased rates of the melting in our ice caps. When we've got more of the ice caps melting, we're getting more flooding as a result. Other areas of the planet are suffering much more extensive drought conditions, and we're seeing more extreme weather events. So the hurricanes are getting a lot more vicious than they used to be. Because of these effects, what we're trying to do is come up with some steps to reduce the greenhouse emissions. So one of the most obvious ones here is we can reduce our consumption of fossil fuels. So rather than burning coal, oil and natural gas, find something else to generate our energy. Those would be things like our renewable energy sources, so solar, wind, etc. We can also use carbon capture techniques to stop carbon dioxide escaping when we do burn those fuels. If we can't obviously stop all of these things, we could protect against the effects, but this is just as costly because building things like flood barriers is very expensive to do. Having to build buildings to withstand extreme weather conditions like the stronger winds, again, costs a lot more money. So we can't just protect against the effects of it and just carry on using all the fossil fuels as we have done. We do need to take steps to change our use. One of the things they could ask you to do on the exam paper is to look at graphs like this. Now, one of their common ones is to ask you to describe the patterns in the graph. Now, when it's asking you to describe the patterns, don't get carried away and start talking about the fact that between 1880 and 1890, then it went down, then up, then down, then up, and so on. When it asks you for a pattern or a general trend, then have a look, what is the general trend on that graph? And generally, we can see it is increasing as time goes on. So don't get too bogged down in talking about every rise and fall. If there's something significant, by all means, put that in there. But 
usually go with the most obvious thing first. Is it increasing over those years? Is it decreasing over those years? And then go from there. Hopefully at the end of this video, you can describe the atmospheric greenhouse effect. You can describe the problems caused by enhanced greenhouse effect. You can talk about some of the ways that we can reduce these problems and you can evaluate evidence for causes of climate change when you're given information in a table or a graph.